Katie likes purple. What's up everyone, my name is Sarah DG Rents Peachy, and today we have the new iPhone 14, iPhone 14 Pro, iPhone 14 Pro Max. We have some accessories here, and the only phone that we do not have is the iPhone 14 Plus. Now the iPhone 14 Plus is coming at a later date. This is actually a new form factor because if you remember previously we had the iPhone mini and then the normal size, which is just the iPhone 14, but they got rid of the smaller phone and enters the big phone. Previously, the bigger iPhone size with the 6.7 inch screen has been reserved for the Pro models, the Pro Max. So now that size is coming to the normal uh, baseline iPhone 14 and they're calling it the iPhone 14 Plus. So I say we just get into the unboxing and then we're gonna check out some of the biggest features. Okay, let's start with the iPhone 14. We have the new blue color here. So as you can see, there is no more SIM tray. So uh, for the US model of iPhones, we have gone completely to eSIM. This cutout here is the antenna cutout for millimeter wave 5G. Um, let's continue the unboxing here. We have a USB-C to a lightning cable. So a reminder that the charging bricks do not come with the new iPhones anymore. Um, we have the literature. It's probably helpful that this is at the top of the instructions saying, hey, you no longer need a physical SIM card, activate your eSIM during the iPhone setup. So we'll see what that process is like. I wonder if that's gonna like really confuse people. One singular Apple sticker. Let's turn this on. Okay, so while we have the iPhone 14 being set up, now time for the iPhone 14 Pros. This is the iPhone 14 Pro in space black. It's a deeper black than the previous space gray. And then we have the new deep purple in the iPhone 14 Pro Max size, the bigger size. So as you can kind of see without software, you have the camera over here, true depth sensor over here. Time for deep purple. So depending on the angle, sometimes it looks gray, black, and then you get hit with, oh, this is a purple phone. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the camera bumps this year are slightly bigger, uh, getting a little bigger and bigger every year. This green phone is an iPhone 13 Pro, and as you can see, there is a slight difference in camera bump size. Another color comparison, here is the blue from last year's iPhone 13 Pro Max, and obviously 14 Pro Max right here. Okay, so here we have a MagSafe leather wallet. Oh, is this purple too? Or it's kind of navy. Let's see how it looks with the purple. I also have their matching color cases. So we have two silicon cases here, and then we have the purple leather case for the Pro Max, which I'm sure is gonna look great. I was about to say, this case uh, looks to have a little bit of a blue tint, uh, and they do call this color Midnight. So it looks black upon first uh, valuation, but then it hits some light and you're like, oh, oh, this has some blue in it. This case's color is called Storm Blue. Oh, that's definitely my favorite color combo right there. That looks good. The other ones were kind of just kind of like meh, because they're so dark, right? When cases have color contrast, I think that's when they when they thrive. Okay, so we have the full iPhone 14 lineup minus the iPhone 14 Plus. I'm gonna actually use these. Let's test out the camera and I'll give you a full rundown of the new iPhone 14. So this is definitely one of those years of incremental updates for iPhone. So if you have an iPhone 12 or 13, you might notice the new iPhone 14s actually don't look that different. And well, that's true. Not a ton has changed, but all phones have slight camera upgrades with bigger sensors letting in more light and what Apple is calling their photonic engine. I swear there's a new name for it like every year, which just means, hey, we upped the secret sauce for computational 
photography and videography, right? So it's improving the color and also the low light performance on the ultra wide and wide sensors. And since the selfie camera sensor is bigger, there's actually autofocus for the first time ever in the selfie camera. So you're actually going to see real depth of field now because while well, sensor's bigger and the aperture is bigger. I don't know if I can tell that much. Maybe when things are closer. Here's a close up of my eyeball. Yeah, the background's blurry. I'm sorry for getting so up and close and personal with that. There are new safety features, including crash detection that will get you help in case of a car crash and emergency SOS via satellite that I think is a painfully niche feature for people who just hike a lot, right? But I swear ever since the keynote, it's kind of been popping up everywhere. I've been noticing it, you know, and Becky and Chris's new adventure documentary and them saying this. this is really sketchy. It's like a rock scramble up the side of a cliff to get over there. And there's no reception and no way to get help if one of us like breaks an ankle or like gets like falls and hurts ourselves. So if that happened, they could have used the new iPhone 14 feature to get help from emergency services even when they don't have service. So that kind of covers our basis between iPhone 14, iPhone 14 plus, iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. But let's hop into the Pro because well, those features are a little bit more exciting. Okay, first up, the Dynamic Island, woo. Okay, silly name, but it's actually a really cool feature now that I've gotten to play around with it. iPhone has really never had multitasking outside of hip windows like many Android devices do, but Dynamic Island, I would say is iPhone's multitasking move while making something ugly like a notch that houses the front camera into something actually extremely useful. I'm actually using the island quite a bit throughout the day. So scenarios like seeing the voice memo visualizer and the time recording while browsing other apps is extremely helpful, not just for monitoring that recording, but also to interact with it and to stop it. The Dynamic Island API is obviously open to developers to use for their own apps, but here are all of the Dynamic Island I feel like that has to be an announcement every time I say it. Here's all of the dynamic island animations that I could discover. about the dynamic island opposed to just the normal notch that's on the iPhone 14 is that, you know, Apple is proud of this version of the notch. So in screen recordings, the dynamic island is there. Previously, the normal notch, they would hide it. You know, it would just be a rectangle. It's a screen recording. But here you see the dynamic island loud and proud at the top of your screen recording. You know, you can show off that you got the new iPhone 14 Pro with all your screen recordings. Unfortunately, the island actually cuts into your content a little bit more than the classic notch if watching two by one aspect ratio content or, you know, anything wider than the classic 16 by nine. It's been super fun to see the internet's reaction to the notch version two or the new iPhone touch bar, right? You have a person over here already programmed this feature for Android, which is pretty funny. And also someone mocked up bringing the dynamic island to iPad, which I actually feel like is genius. It would make a proper like top dog for the iPad that, well, everyone wants because that would make it more MacBook like. Okay, so moving on to the always on display. As someone who never wears a watch, but as someone who is always desperate for the time, I appreciate the always on display more than I thought. Honestly, I really should probably just wear a watch, but I can never remember to actually charge my Apple watch. And as I'm saying that, I'm realizing that I could also just buy like a normal watch because those do exist. Maybe that's my solution. Yes, Android phones have had this for a while, but often it's just a black screen. So I appreciate that, hey, the actual personality of your iPhone stays intact. And especially if you have a photo, it's going to preserve the skin tones of the human person. I don't know why I said it like that, um, but it just looks good. It's a good experience. I had a lot of questions from people. Hey, can you turn off the always on display? And yes, it's just in the display and brightness settings. And it actually 
actually turns off if you turn your iPhone into low power mode to save battery. However, am I testing from a full charge with the iPhone 14, I guess on the iPhone, with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it stayed at 100% battery after 12 hours of the always on display. And then it dropped down to 95% battery after the next 12 hours, so in a full 24 hours. And that was during the day, so some notifications started flooding in, and so that's probably why the battery started just ticking down a bit. Also with the Pro, reminder that the display is brighter, so you can go up to 1600 nits uh, displaying HDR content, and when you're outside, you can max out at 2000 nits. Now, now that depends what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of intense camera work, hey, it's gonna bump that display brightness down. Uh, we were outside testing the camera in the Texas heat, and honestly, it's actually not that bad. It was probably like 87, 88 degrees, not the like 105 degrees that we've had this summer, which has been so brutal. But even then we were uh, testing out cinematic mode and yeah, it bumped the display brightness down so much. It was kind of hard to see the pictures that we were taking. Okay, so we're outside shooting for the first time uh, with the 14 Pro, we're shooting cinematic mode. But I will say that max 2000 nit brightness of the new display when you're out in the sun doesn't matter much when it has, you know, significant significantly overheated because we've been shooting cinematic mode. Like look how dark the screen is right now. It's still working though. You know, I've had experiences with fancier phones, like sometimes the Xperia, once you're outside shooting in some of the fancy video mode, it'll make the screen less bright, but then you can't even film. So we're still able to film with it. So uh, take that into account. But if you're just doing normal stuff outside, the display should be brighter. Okay, speaking of outside, let's take a break. Let's test out some of these camera features because on the Pro, we have a new main sensor sensor that is now 48 megapixels. Now, if you're shooting photos just like normal, the end result is still gonna be the 12 megapixels that we're used to. But if you turn over into Apple Pro Raw mode, that's when you can really utilize all of the 48 megapixels, which just means, ooh, lots of detail, great for cropping in. Now, action mode is limited to 2.8K resolution at 30 frames per second. You can also uh, turn it to 24 frames per second. And guys, quick reminder, if you didn't know, you can change frame rates in app uh, or resolution just by clicking the numbers in app here. So Via, I'm gonna make you just chase me. Okay. I'm just gonna run. And we basically have one pro set to 4K24 with right. ultra wide camera. And we have the other pro set to action mode. So it's doing 2.8K at 24 frames and hopefully is going to stabilize it even more. So you feel free to just like, like don't stress about stabilization. You just like follow me. This is gonna be the most I've run in like forever. I'll be so <laughs> <laughs> I don't have flip flops on. <laughs> okay, we messed up there a little bit because the action mode actually uses the ultra wide camera. So that was normal wide versus action mode. We want more of a one-to-one -one comparison. So we switched it now. So two pros, 14 pros, ultra wide normal, and then ultra wide with action mode on. Um, obviously the one without action mode is gonna have more resolution at 4K24. Okay, start recording. There I go, start running. I'm going the other way, I'm going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Action movie! Action movie! Okay, let's view. Let's view the footage. Okay, so what's crazy about that example is the ultra wide already does so much image stabilization and honestly it doesn't even need that much because the wider you go in the focal length the less shaky it's going to be so i'm actually glad we got both examples <laughs> like still out of breath but as you can see it really matters when we were like jumping over a curb or stumbling on the grass it really does a good job of evening out those vibrations so even like running normal iPhone image stabilization is already really great. So I think where this is going to really come in handy is again, if you're doing more of the extreme stuff, like you're mountain biking or um, you're in a really shaky car, maybe you're go-karting or something. So I'm excited to test this out more in a more intense setting, which is coming up, but 
that is all of the physical activity I'm doing today. Okay. <laughs> Cinematic mode is something we saw in last year's iPhone 13 Pros, but that has now come to the iPhone 14 as well as the Pro. And you can now shoot up to 4K in cinematic mode, both 30 frames per second and 24. Now, if you're not familiar with it, this is going to make your background very blurry, just like if you were shooting on a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Once you're viewing that image, you can go and press edit and you can even toggle whose face is in focus if there are two subjects in camera, as well as toggling in between the background and your person's face. Also in the pro models when shooting in cinematic mode, you can also shoot it using the telephoto lens now. And I have to say maybe just because it's the telephoto look and you're already compressing the image so much and the background already just seems more compressed and far away, right? It looks way more natural. And I have to say the image stabilization is crazy. Now I went into the settings and changed it to like F8 uh, because we shot with the sun behind me and it was kind of struggling with the hair and the cutout of my person. But once I turned the blur a little bit down, so that is turning the f-stop number up, going from F2.8 to like F8, it looked a little bit more natural um, and it looked pretty darn good. Here's a few more examples of the light just directly on me, which it definitely does much better with that. But just when the sun is super high in the sky and it's like 1, 2 p.m., it's usually better to shoot with the sun behind you, kind of backlit, than it is just having that harsh light on you. Just a little, just a little tip, a little tip for you. So this is a comparison to the new 4K 24 cinematic mode, the iPhone 14 Pro. And this is the iPhone 13 Pro with only 1080 30. So maybe we can punch in to see if there's a difference. How's it looking? Okay, let's talk eSIM. So we no longer are using physical cards. There is no SIM tray in the iPhone 14. So I set up my eSIM for the first time, went into the cellular settings, and there is a button just for that. When setting up a new iPhone, it's actually pretty easy. It detected the eSIM since it was on the same Apple iCloud account. And so going from iPhone to iPhone via eSIM is extremely easy. Now you might have to get your carrier's help if you're going from Android to iPhone. Uh, it might get a little bit more complicated, but it was much easier than I thought. So this is going to help with things like SIM jacking. So no longer can people take a SIM out of your phone and have access to your phone number. Now, a lot of people are upset with kind of like forcing people over to eSIM. For techies with multiple phones, a physical SIM card is extremely easy to switch from phone to phone, iPhone to Android. So. I totally understand how this is going to be very annoying, but for normals, I think it's gonna be more convenient. You can even add a second eSIM. Maybe you're traveling internationally and you wanna hook up to maybe like a Google Fi plan for the month, and then you can just turn it off when you're not using it anymore. You can connect your work and personal phone number to the same phone by just adding both of them in the eSIM settings. The biggest red flag is if carriers take advantage of this and all of a sudden you have a random $30 transfer fee when going from phone to phone to have them help you do it. But ideally, this is going to make it easier for them. You know, physical SIM cards aren't going to fail and they have to ship you a new one. And what's interesting is this actually might lead to more competition between carriers because T-Mobile is running a three month trial where people can just, hey, add a T-Mobile eSIM to their phone, try out the T-Mobile network, the 5G LTE network in their area. And if it's better, then just switch over to that network. Easy Easy as that, no friction. So let me know what you think about eSIM down in the comments below and let's wrap up some of these topics. If I may present just a few bullet points of maybe what I would like to see come to iPhone. The obvious things, USB-C. I'm praying we get USB-C and they just don't take away all the ports. That would not be good. I would love to see high res slow-mo. If we could get 4K 120 frames per second, somebody. I think 
think the selfie cam could still be better. So they're bragging about it now having autofocus, but honestly, there's not, there's not that much depth. You still need to switch over to portrait mode to get that. And also a better telephoto lens that can reach farther, is sharper. Um, as you can tell, camera bumps have gotten pretty big. I feel like Apple could, could fit something in there. Samsung has absolutely killed it with telephoto lenses and that's something I would just love to see. And the last thing is better battery life for the normal size iPhone for the 6.1 inch iPhones. I'm a big fan of this size, uh, but you know, when I'm going on these heavy screen time days doing seven hours, I start to think about this Pro Max and it's amazing battery life and being like, uh, should I be using that? But this just fits in my hands so much better. So I'm looking forward to the iPhone 14 Plus, the only new iPhone that I don't have here because Apple says it's the best battery life in an iPhone ever. Regardless, if you're upgrading or not. If you have an iPhone 8 or newer, your iPhone is gonna be feeling a little bit more fresh with iOS 16. So it is officially launched to the public and it's it's good. It's a good fresh coat of paint. The lock screen is now super new with cool wallpaper collections and also the ability to add widgets. Messages have a lot of great new features like swiping over to basically label them as unread. Notifications, the animations are much better. Just, just the design is great. And then also random features like going into a photo and just holding down on the subject and then it completely knocking out the background in seconds. And then you can copy and paste. I just sent John a cutout picture of me. So definitely download iOS 16 when you have a chance. Well, I appreciate you spending time with me. And before you leave, guys, it is literally the last day to back Lab 22 on Kickstarter. It is a series of tech stands and I'm a huge iPad user and for the longest time, I just wanted a simple stand that, yeah, could be a normal stand, but you could also bring it down and it was great for drawing and note taking and well, gosh dang it, I had to make it. And so if this is something that interests you as well, I'll make sure to leave that link in the description below. You can check it out. The last day guys, the last day, it's, crazy. We just hit 400k. I'm not going to get greedy and say, can we reach 500k? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> it has already surpassed my expectations. So truly thank you from the bottom of my heart for support. I am so excited to get these in y'all's hands, um, making something physical in the physical world that is useful to people. Uh, tech tools. I love it. It's, it's, been a fun process and so thank you. So hey guys, stay tuned for more iPhone content in the coming days. Let me know if you like this video and hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And until next time everyone, stay peachy. Okay, bye. Holy shit, I am living in my worst nightmare. Do you, do you guys see that dot right there on top of the book? Okay, when setting up this background, I was gonna move those and then a freaking big water bug cockroach thing was in between. It terrified me. I do not do well with bugs. And while I was filming, look, it moved. And this is why we need a better telephoto on the iPhone. I'm not going close. It, and it, it, it's like, it's confident. Look at that stance. Oh my God, you guys, it flies. And it's on the table now. It flies. Holy shit. Look at it all smug walking off.